Okay, according to everybody in the chat room, we are good to go. So, we're going to play Dream Daddy. Um, oh, God, this is the hell that my life has become, guys. On a Wednesday night, coming back from vacation, I said to myself, what can I do to amuse myself? And uh, somehow it ended up being a gay daddy dating simulator uh, from Steam that everybody just kept telling me I had to, had to play at some point. So, Dream Daddy. Yeah. I like the fact that there's little dad tips. You always have a time for beer with your buds. That's a fucking lie. Dad tip 76. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I should mute the mic right now. I love the 80s background they have here. It's like a bad painting. Oh, snoring. Uh, Amanda. Your daughter's name is Amanda. Amanda says, Dad. And Dad snores. Dad, wake up! Oh, okay. Uh, so I have the choice of wake up, pretend to be dead, or five more minutes. Five more minutes never works. Wake up is just pointless because it's another soul-crushing day in the life of a single father. So I will pretend to be dead. It won't work. If you've ever been around small children, you know that this has a 0% chance of working, but let's do it. Oh. Oh, I get to narrate. I like this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me take a drink. <clears throat> I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God... Amanda, I bequeath to you all of my earthly possessions, which, if it's like most people, and especially like me, that's like four pairs of dirty underwear and a bunch of empty liquor bottles. Spread my ashes over my recliner. <laughs> okay, well, your corpse better get into the movie, man, because it's legal. Okay, so they're moving. Mm. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn. And start spooning a moving box. Oh, and that's your... Of course she's a teenager. Because it can't be easy. It can't be like the daughter's six or so and and loves you and likes being around you. No, the daughter has to be a teenager because, you know, what game would be complete without reminding you that you are worthless to everyone in it? Morning, Manda Panda. That is horrible. Oh, she has a little panda on her jacket. That's cute. That's, and she looks sassy. I like that. She looks so sassy. Ugh. Yikes, dad. Build that dad. Sorry, I had a little mic malfunction for a second there. Build that dad. Ooh, you get to build a daddy. They don't just give you a daddy. You have to build one. The default daddy looks like Mr. Clean. Like, he looks like a hairy Miss. Ooh, there's a hair option. Hold on. That is Mr. Clean. They have stolen Mr. Clean. Oh, and there's dad bodies. Oh, fat dad. Cancer dad with hair. And what? They're wearing tank tops, too. That's, that's a little worrisome. Oh my god. Oh. Cancer dad. What's well, cancer dad with a cancer dad with a tank top and hair? Now he's really cancer dad. Oh. Well, okay, we're going to do this a lot like my body type cuz I am fat. I am just so fat and and hairy and Oh my the arms on the dad are amazing. Look at that. They're beefy arms. They, like, never have the flabby-armed dad. Like, where's the flabby-armed dad? We'll go... Kind of tan dad. With different head shapes. I, I noticed there's, like, 
no round head shape in the game. All of these heads look like somebody took like a baby doll and stuck it on a hairy fat man. Oh, that chiseled jaw, but that does not work with Fat Dad. That works with Fat Dad, however, does... No, Daddy shaves. Daddy likes smooth skin. Oh, and here... This is... Guys, this may be the whole thing. I'm kind of enjoying. Oh, man bun Fat Daddy with hair. This is like San Francisco in a game right here. Oh, cornrow daddy. Daddy from the hood. Oh, bedhead dad. Oh my, 90s kid and play dad. That's one, oh my god. This is just really well done. With all the different, like, little styles and stuff. I like that. Hold on. Yes. Yes, we'll do that. And now the eyes. Aw, anime daddy. Daddy has enough of your shit. Tired daddy. Oh, that is like fucking meth head daddy right there. Oh. I really like the the whole different Ooh, that daddy's gonna fuck you. Look at that daddy. That daddy is so going to fuck somebody. Squinting daddy. <laughs> oh my god. Hold on. That daddy has had way too much meth. We're gonna go with tired daddy. I like tired daddy. Tired daddy resonates with me. Nose selection. They should legit they should have done this like Skyrim. You could spend four hours making your dad. A snub nose daddy. Wide nose. I like that. Wide nose daddy. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm just. <laughs> the way they've done this is really kind of. Ooh, daddy has a toothpick and a bad attitude. That daddy's gonna spank you. Oh. Let's do that. I'm always partial to the goatee whenever I do this stuff. Uh, no glasses. No piercings. Daddy doesn't like piercings. Okay, what? Well, so, uh, one of the options is to have Daddy walk around in his underwear. Plain white tee. <laughs> And the sad thing is, is, like, all of these are such typical dad outfits. You can almost, like, hear the kids' eyes rolling all the way back in their head as they see their father walk out every day in that. Oh, that daddy... That daddy likes cats. He's a fan of the pussy. I like this. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Right there. I, I want the the beach bum drug dealer daddy that we have going on here, and I'm gonna name him Tony Man Tana, and we'll be that dad. Dad tip eighty six: Always try your best at everything. Don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. Back to sassy pants. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler? What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos in little photo right. albums. I haven't seen these in years. She is so happy to look at old pictures. Like, I was never that happy. Oh, the baby pictures, too. I was never happy to look at baby pictures. Like, somewhere out there, there's a baby picture in one of my mom's photo albums of me. And it's me standing on, like, the little bar at, at 
the first house we lived in, separating the kitchen from the living room, and I'm wearing cowboy boots, a cowboy hat, a striped shirt, and nothing else. So I'm a little amazed that these are the types of, uh, of photos we get to see from her. It's amazing. Um... That she's so happy. I, she That is genuine joy. Hold on. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile. And we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Yeah, it sure was, little Miss Sassy Pants. Look at those sunglasses. Oh, oh. Oh, I see what they're trying to do here. I see what they're trying to do. How many of you out there were waiting for this moment to see which one I would pick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you sneaky little bastards. Now I know why you wanted me to play this. Um, you know what? I'm gonna fuck with you, though. I'm gonna fuck with you, and we're just gonna go the traditional route. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on because she's just that cool. She even wore the sunglasses at night. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four. <laughs> oh my god, that dragon costume. She's so adorable. I love that little girl. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. I hear that's what Alkali calls his husband. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? <laughs> uh, I hear that's something Alkali's husband has said to him. You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth. I swear to God, there's another alkali joke in there, but I'm going to see the son of a bitch in like 15 days, mm -hmm. and I don't want him to punch me. Uh, right? Yep. Definitely repress that memory. And this was you and your horse phase. Everybody oh, has no. a horse phase, and some foxes never grow out of it. Dad! Oh, sassy pants is pouting. The, the fucking sunglasses photo didn't upset her, but the horsies do. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Uh. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above my head. Her head. With my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Yeah. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Oh my god, he was in a ska band. Ouch. <laughs> No, you brought that on yourself, Tony Mantana. Huh. The sc the Scamutus Manifesto had a chance back in the day. Oh my god, I hate this dad. Uh, I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. I love the fact that there's like a sound bite just for the annoyed teenager dad grunt, too. Dad, Emma R's been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who. <laughs> oh, my God. Tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police pooped her pants during a sleepover. That one is way too close to home. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. Fairly accurate. Uh, I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station. It just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Aww. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Eh? Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she's a photographer. And a $20 gift card to the Fridays. 
then you got food poison. Oh. Oh. You know, with a Z. The dad jokes are so horrible in this. It's... <laughs> It's like they hired my father to write the script for their game. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Mm -hmm. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. <sighs> I finally decide to break the silence. This w It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything... Oh, okay. For, for like a second there, I was afraid the car accident in the hospital parking lot was going to be... Like, why the main character in this is a single dad. Like, how fucked up would that backstory be? You were born and it was a beautiful day. And then as we left the hospital, your mother was killed in a car accident. Um... Uh, after taking a Polaroid. <laughs> but your mother, oh man, she holds my hand and looks directly in the eyes, and the calmest I've ever seen her, she says, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Oh. She was right, you know. Oh, they're having an emotional moment. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it must be like ah. for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Hmm. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Ah. Oh my god, that is such a dad car, too. Like, look at that. There's shit everywhere. Old tickets and rocks and papers. It's like only missing 19 empty coffee cups and 4 empty cigarette packs. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years mm -hmm. ago. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? <laughs> shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows. You were a very imaginative child. Yeah. Hey, remember when I broke the back window play? We get it, Amanda. You break shit. Oh. And there will be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will take forever to hold a place in my heart. But it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready, said Tony Mantana. The movie man begins to pull away, and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So... So what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Ooh, I get an announcer voice too. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features multiple places to sleep. Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but the couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. <laughs> what a deal. I mean, if sleep weren't for... Sleep is for the weak. My god, the daughter's like equal parts sassy and hardcore. You sleep more than anyone I know. I admit my faults. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point. Mm -hmm. Not gonna happen, Pops. She needs to stop calling me Pops. Pops is what you call little old men. Not fat, Bahamian, Bahama suit wearing, Hawaiian shirt wearing daddies. I think someone needs to do a three point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. And that's how every fucking horror movie starts. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Uh. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Oh. Don't you dare. Senior. Uh. I know where this is going. Citizen. Ah, ha, 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 dad. Hmm. I'm just gonna ignore oh. that. 
but I won't forget it. And when you're old and gray, I'm putting you in the best home Medicaid will pay for. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go sh grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay. You're right. We'll get some work done, then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Sassy Pants, the for sale sign is no more. She is so sassy! Nice form, sweet pea! I got a problem with authority! So do I, Amanda! I like your attitude. I'm so proud. Hmm. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich tuckered me out. She's like switching between being 17 and 70 in the same sentence. Huh. An ice cream sandwich. <laughs> okay. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m., which is obviously time for drinks. Coffee. I gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice, or I'm gonna be useless all day. The old bean juice. And I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it! They have like the weirdest father-daughter relationship. They really stepped up the production value in episode 5. I like the little dad tips at the bottom of the screen. They're like the tips you would get from your father if he wasn't an abusive drunk that locked you in a closet and... I... I need a minute. Okay. <clears throat> we walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is in such convenient walking distance. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table but he is very much within my personal zone. Dad, and what's the etiquette? when you have a dirty mug is there is the dad in this jerry seinfeld what they're like went whole 90s fucking observational comedian here what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug oh or do you leave it there and feel your flush face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their Aww. mug? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! I like this dad, too. Like, he's socially awkward dad. Oh. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn-in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. I like the coffee shop owner. He's got a button fly. Who has a button fly? Welcome to the coffee spoon. Got, oh, and his name's Matt. Matt with one T. Because he's hip and he's with it. What's with the name? Uh -oh. oh, it's uh, it's kind of okay. dumb. Are we talking about Matt with one T or the coffee spoon? Because both of them are kind of dumb there, Matt with one T. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? Yes, because of the name, not the coffee. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking about it, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. And that is exactly what I said the first time QM and I went out on a date. Awkward silence. Mm. So what'll it be? A new coffee shop. Mm. 
I scan the chalkboard menu and am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a black coffee. A cl Ooh, he liked that. Little hearts come out when he likes that. I enjoyed that myself. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Godspeed you, Black Emperor, is a really amazing and influential progressive rock band known for their sweeping soundscapes and fuck off and get the coffee. Hey, dude. I'm doing the thing. Yes, you are, Matt, with one T in the button fly jeans. Hey. But coming right up. Hmm. And for you, I'll have a macchiato to Marco, please. I don't get that <laughs> reference. Coming right up, do what you want. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Oh, how many shots do you get if you take the Biggie Smalls? Uh, medium. Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyway. Hey. Hey! Ska was cool. No, Tony. No, Tony. We're, we're not gonna... I, we're not gonna defend Ska, Tony. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay. It's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. Huh. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. Yes, but that's because his name is Matt with one T. You should totally become friends with him. Nobody who named... No! No! I only like Matt's with two T's. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. Yes, Tony, that would be the definition of being a recluse. Yeah. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table and immediately burn the and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Tony. Oh, oh right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure mate will maybe come in from time to time. I would never go back to this coffee shop. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile. Oh, I see where this is going. Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that Nana Bread a taste. Nana Bread. She's 17 and 7 now. Doing free creative, I think that would be commensurate with... Uh, I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. I chose wisely in picking the fat dad bod. I was just going to give you guys free banana bread. <coughs> right, yes, that. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Matt seems mildly mentally handicapped. Mm. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Hi, stumped. I'm dad. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Oh. Ooh. Right said banana bread. Grateful banana bread. Banana bread Kennedys. Okay. Fun fact about Boozy. I love punk. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. I like that. You may wear button fly pants and and have lost your second tea, but we have good taste, Matt, and I appreciate that about you. You know, like the punk band? I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. Oh, ho, 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 ho. maybe later, Tony. <laughs> that actually has a nice ring to it. A hard dad? Really? Hey. Yeah, but now, oh. Oh, I am so disappointed on where this went. 
<laughs> so was Tony. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Oh. See? It sounds good when you say it. Oh. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet. Just for a moment. Oh, he's a bad boy. You can tell. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Oh. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Uh, there is no way I would be going right back to unpacking. Let's go get some fresh air. They're going to hop right out of our bike and crush cars with their bony fingers. Amanda, I already have an irrational fear that my skeleton will one day escape this flesh sack and run amok. Please don't encourage it. Right, sorry. The writing on this is great. I, it's bad, but it's intent. Always bring a war chest. <laughs> um, always help a friend in need. Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Hmm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. Yes. I love sassy pants. You can never be too careful. See that baby in that stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. <laughs> Sounded good when she said it. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice, empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! <laughs> Ow. A frisbee suddenly <laughs> hits me in the face. Woof. <laughs> A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief. Ooh, a corgi. I love corgis. I like your necktie, puppy. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh, God, this is the cutest dog. Yes, it is. But where do I pet the dog? Dare we try? Yes, we do. I give him the customary pets. The dog loves this. Good call. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaii... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a bear. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from hey. me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. You know, people traditionally say sorry after they hit someone in the face, but I didn't. I'll catch it with my teeth next time. You caught me off guard on this round. Not again. Not ever again. <laughs> Did like eight plants and cummy symbols just shoot from behind that guy? What the fuck did you people tell me to play? No, fucking seriously. Th there were eggplants and cummy signals. What? What in the... Oh. Oh, this is... So... Eggplant Dick is named Brian. Uh, Alright. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is my daughter. Amanda. I look over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy and being absolutely worthless in this situation. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Your dog's cool. You gave my dad a concussion. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? His daughter's the dog. Have you not been paying attention? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's holding a rifle and taking careful aim at the president across Dealey Plaza. <clears throat> She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it on the ground and heads over to us. This is Daisy. She's reading The Brothers Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, she's actually 40. How old is she? 10! She's a precocious little youngster. Whoa! My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh. Oh no, it's happening. Oh my god. Go on, Daisy! Tell oh it's a Pokemon! Um, I... Brian, that's my girl! She said like two fucking words, Brian. Don't, don't get excited. Amanda, get in there! Amanda, okay, okay! Tony's HP... Oh, oh my god. Do you have to... Are you going to make your daughters fight to the death on the playground? Because I am like all fucking behind that, like a child fight circle. That would be wonderful. This game is a lot darker than I thought. Oh, you just brag about them. Okay. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Brian, wow, congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. Brian, Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Oh, you lose 50. What the fuck, Amanda? Step it up. Let's see, you pull a wrinkled copy of Amanda's last grade card out of your back pocket, Dad. Awesome grades! Brian loses 25 HP! You really carry that around everywhere? Ouch. Maybe it is kind of weird. You lose 5. Daisy just started a weekly chess club over at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president, too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. That is a shitty high school. Like, it's no wonder her grades are so good. They don't have a chess club or a computer lab. We don't have computers. Your daughter is the smartest one here. She can read. You lose 10 HP. Oh. But I'm in the lead. I'm in the lead. Um. What's that do? Can't switch to Amanda is your... Oh, well, we're fucked. Um. Uh, what, what's the next item do? Child art. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute! It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. You regain 20 HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get to the top prize. A canoe! We're taking it out next weekend. How is that even possible? <laughs> Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy. Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. It's even less, uh, less appropriate when you realize she said it at the age of 12. You lose 10 HP. Oh, I may win. Amanda's in all honors classes. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about her having to skip a grade. Oh, a few months back, Amanda started volunteering at her homeless shelter in her old neighborhood. I've got him on the ropes. You two seem to have such a good relationship. It warms my heart. Why do you have to be such a good loser? But he lost, and that's the important thing, Tony. So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live, too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch style on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point so I can have a literal dick measuring competition with you. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Mm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Meth. You were doing meth, Amanda. Did you forget the six years in rehab? 
Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses, much like foxes again. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not sassy pants. I love that. Look at that face with the one raised eyebrow. She's amazing. I want to bring her out of the game and make her my daughter. It's not too late to mine her in horse creative writing. There's a drop down on for affinity for that. Too close to the truth, Dad. Let us never speak again of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Mantana. Didn't she say earlier his name was not Sir Horsington the Brave? <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. You know what's really funny about that is there is... Somebody turned me on to this back, uh, back in April. But there is, like, honestly a uh a my little pony fan fiction that's in like 27 parts uh it's like equestria fallout or something it's i mean it's really massive so we have just met the rider uh the rider is apparently amanda here and uh yeah her gay dad is what inspired her uh, let's go and unpack. We should head home. I'm gonna do four need four hours minimum to figure out how to build my new bed, and I'm not, and I'd like not to have to sleep on the floor. Look at situations positively, except the one where they tell you you have HIV. Uh, I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass, and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor? Already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! <laughs> a handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. I like him better than all the other ones put together right now because he brought cookies. Hello! Wow. Well, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Tony. That's what my name is. <laughs> I saw the moving man and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, mm. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? <laughs> wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Give me the fucking cookies. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a nope. smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh. Amanda, come back. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Mm. Children in general are just tough. Except when you drop them on their heads. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. I have four. What have you done? Not as much as Joseph, apparently. Oh, uh, I meant, don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. But he's not the first neighbor you've met. You've met uh, Matt with one T and the button fly pants. And you've met Bear Daddy with the eggplant cummies shooting out from his back when you talk to him. So you've met two neighbors now, Tony. You just don't remember them. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She's She's dead. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Oh. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in the community. What do you say, pal? That is fucking smooth. Oh, my God. That is smoother than good whiskey. I will remember that the next time I accidentally talk about someone's dead wife. Mm. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. 
We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister down at the church. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Nice. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. Was he ever really there? He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face, and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Tony and I are like of one mind here. Where'd those cookies go? I ate them. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. He talked about our dead, my, my dead wife, and his cookies sucked. So you ate all of them anyway. I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. Why'd they even give me the choice if that was like the only one? <laughs> We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts with kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Huh. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house this is. Mm -hmm. I'd hazard to guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. Yeah. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. Hey, guys, is your dad around? Oh, my God. Those children are soulless. They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to... Uh, return this nice plate, and thank you for the cookies, children of the damned. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. Christy. Silence. They were really good. Christian. Silence. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. Chris, uh, there's a reason we haven't seen any mothers in, these game, in this game yet, and it's because those children killed them. Like all of them, they run a cult. I chuckle, even the daughter knows it. Look, look at the fear in her eyes. I chuckle nervously. Mm. Well, okay, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and back away slowly, right, Dad? Right. That's what we're gonna do. The kid's eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back, even as we approach our house. You don't go back to your house, now they know where you live. Uh. I need to get something to get my mind off of those carbon copy kids. I need to rest mm. my eyes. You've been awake for what? Three hours? And that's three hours too many. Eat plenty of carbs the night before a big game. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Tony! Bra! Hey! I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar, oh my god. His name is Craig, and I like him very much. Oh. <laughs> oh. Like, I'm sitting over here with my headphones on, and that just came right through my just... His name is Craig. I like him very much. Oh. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy. Oh. Holy wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow. You look... Great. Uh, yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. Always oh, a college, but we were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello and hello, cute baby. Nice. Oh, there's a baby. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. River's actually the product of a government experience experiment. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Uh -huh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, uh -huh. man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. 
No kidding, Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh, man. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Huh. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Gee, I wonder the fuck why. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? Right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Keg Stan Craig. It was my old college nickname. <coughs> he got it because he did a lot of keg stands. It's that thing where you, we, uh, we don't need a fucking keg stand explained to my 17-year-old daughter, Craig. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Ah, uh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really got to keep my heart rate up. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training, and because I can't leave a fucking infant alone at the apartment. You jog daily? I jog yearly on January. Uh, fat dad mm -hmm. joke. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Fuck you, Craig. Haha, <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. You know, we could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Hey, um, quick note, because I don't want anybody out there to get uh, a misconception. Um, I was a, a partier back in college, and um, I can say very, very clearly and emphatically here, uh, there is no such fucking thing as a bro brunch. That doesn't happen. You don't go out and drink and party all night and then the next day, like, wake up your bros and go, bro, let's go get mimosas. Okay? Um, that's That that never happens. So I doubt the the pedigree of the writers on this part of, of Dream Daddy. All right, sure. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and chugs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. Let's go have brunch. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. Anyways, we better get home. You always have time for something. Uh, Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can set. Hmm. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. Oh, exposition. No, don't say that. Hmm. Oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know. I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. I assume she's going to college. You yeah. promise? Of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Yeah. Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor because she's a fucking heathen who doesn't realize there's a coffee table right there. Right there. It's less than a foot away, Amanda. You take two steps, you put the envelopes on the fucking coffee table, young lady. That's how this works. <coughs> This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. She's so happy. Open it. But I'm scared. It's just a new um, just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. 
We have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application. Uh, her face drops. Regret to inform you that we would unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design, and that's a good thing, Amanda. That's a very good thing. You're applying to an art school. What are you doing with your future, Amanda? There's no future in art school. You need to get a STEM degree, young lady. Engineering, architecture, their artistic fields, you get to draw in them as you're making up the plans, and they pay well. Now, that's a real job. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I would, shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever, but I did it anyways because I'm sassy. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Tony, you are like way too buddy-buddy of a permissive father. Your daughter's going to art school and throws garbage on the floor. Yeah, I know it's fine. Are you actually fine? Or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. I guess I'm a union member. Boss man's been riding us proles too hard. Time to rise up for our rights. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're not even going to invite me to the riot. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's an honest day's work for an honest day's ride. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Go out and watch the game. Mm. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. The game on TV at somewhere other than here. I'm going to go do drugs and commit some light arson. I'm concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. <laughs> like, this is the most unrealistic representation of a father's relationship with his teenage daughter ever. Because, like, they, I've been playing the game for almost an hour. They haven't, like, screamed at each other. Period. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, making fun of sports is played out. All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Dad tip 24. Always help a friend in need. Exercise regularly and you'll stay healthy. Wow, I guess I didn't think this through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, and apparently, like every father, I am a technological idiot. So I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go. And that's how he ended up in Compton. Cool, cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really? And the distance, could it be? A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's. I like this bar. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any uncomfortable confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. 
A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh. Hello. Good to see fresh meat in here, says the woman wearing the fucking crucifix. I'm Mary. Come here often? She's wearing a crucifix and she's drinking wine. This is going to be Joseph's wife. Money says this is Joseph's wife. Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Tony, by the way. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh, oh I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Lady, do I have a group of people you need to meet? <laughs> um, I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, ah. buy a gala drink. Uh, fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, my money. My money. Ah, uh, maybe some other time. Ah. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar page for dinner. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A uh, little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the car. Ooh, bad daddy's back. He sits alone, sipping whiskey, and watching the game as well. Hello, bad daddy. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I love this very vague writing about sports. Like, written in a way that, that like they know that nobody's going to understand it. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Tony. I... You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yes, bad daddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No. That'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. Are you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I love shots. No cummies from this one. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Tony, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Oh, let's go with that. Your face is good. Thanks. Wait, I think this is what flirting is. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. No, Tony, you're, you're, you're cool. You have a Hawaiian shirt with a tropical suit. You are awesome. What are you doing here tonight? My daughter kicked in, running from my problems. We're gonna try to be cool for Robert. I like your style. He gets up. I... Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Huh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? 
Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac. Does everybody live there? Yes. Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Tony. So are we doing this? or Why, whatever do you mean, Robert? I am so innocent and pure. Hey. Do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Lay it on smooth. Dad ain't gonna get his freak on. Mm. That sounded smoother in my head. Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me grabbing my hips. I would like to take a moment and say that I believe the remainder of of this broadcast is going to be uh, definitely uh, TV and MA. Uh, if you have young children in the room, uh, I would advise you to have them leave now. Um, come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression burning like a thousand suns. He kisses me again, and I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take mine off, too. His hands roam down my chest, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. And that appears to uh, to be where it is. And it is now 11.10. And my vacation is over. And that sucks. So we are going to call it a night. Uh, hold on, let me let me save first. It's saved, so we are going to call it a night right here, because uh, otherwise, guys, I will stay up until like midnight tonight playing Dream Daddy, um, and that's just horrible. This game is fucking amazing. I mean this. This game is amazing. I I don't really know how I feel about this. <laughs> oh, Wolf Teller. Wolf Teller just got here. Wolf Teller, man, uh, on the bright side, I recorded this. Um, it will be going up on like the YouTube channel or something in the next couple days. So you'll have it there. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm going to be, uh, I'll be doing this again at some point. I really enjoyed doing this, I, and I'm enjoying the game, and uh, quite frankly, I don't think I can justify playing this game if I'm not streaming it for you guys. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm going to have to stream it again just so I can justify playing the game and see what's going on with it. All right, guys. Well, that brings it to an end tonight. Um, you all know the website, lawyersandliquor.com. I assume you have the twi uh, the Tumblr or the yeah, Tumblr, the Twitter out there, uh, Boozy Barrister, Boozy Badger. Uh, thanks for coming in. I'll be back probably next Wednesday, maybe a little earlier than I was this week. It's really fucking late, and I have cold dinner sitting in the kitchen. Uh Outside of that, not a whole lot. I'll be at Furry Delphia. Uh, and there we go. That's it. Hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it.